time to talk about the iPhone 13 Pro and how all of the features hold up after about 7 months. All of these features are going to be broken down into about 5 categories. The first being the processor, the next being the cameras, the battery, the screen, and the other being other. The processor. This time around it's a 6 core CPU, 5 core GPU. You're not going to notice a huge difference with this phone versus like an iPhone 11 or going all the way, dare I say, back to the iPhone 10. And let me tell you why. Okay, getting the base model of some random phone versus the base model for an iPhone, you can be rest assured knowing that the processor in the iPhone of a newer iPhone is gonna hold up for the next couple of years. Hey there, Editor Cody. I just had a couple of things that I wanted to add to this video. The first, what I was really trying to say about the processor is you're gonna notice the increased CPU and GPU performance when you're playing games or do anything else that involves a lot of processing power. Where you won't notice it is when you're scrolling through web pages, social media feeds or using snapchat or something moving on to the cameras this is where there's been a lot of new features so let's break them down the first three most notable differences are the actual lenses themselves we have the wide lens which i must say is pretty good and i use most of the time there's the telephoto which is in brightly lit scenarios gives you way more distance with more sharpness so what that means is if you have the wide and you zoom in it's gonna start doing like a digital zoom and it's gonna look kind of grainy. But in a well-lit scenario where you use the telephoto, it's gonna be a lot sharper at farther distances. The next lens on the phone is the ultra wide, which is pretty cool because you're able to get a lot closer to subjects. On the topic of photography, let's delve more into how it handles photos. It's gonna handle photos really well. And they're just gonna generally look like iPhone photos because there's a small degree of kind of like auto editing that you can't turn off with this phone. What I theorize is the culprit here is what's called deep fusion, which is basically where your phone in the background does a bunch of fancy stuff, makes it auto edits in the way that it thinks looks good, which most of the time it does kind of just look brighter, especially if there's skies in the background. Let's just say they're not really my preference. So I generally try to get around this auto editing. The next feature that I think is just an S tier feature and I use all the time is night mode. This is not something that came only with the iPhone 13 Pro, but I think it warrants being talked about because I use it all the time. And this is a huge advantage that I have over the 10s Max, which was the phone I used before that didn't have a night mode. Night mode's such a cool feature but you don't need this phone to get it. You can get this feature on the iPhone 11 or newer. So you can take your pick for which iPhone best suits your needs. And as long as it's 11 or newer, you'll have the night mode. Moving on to the video, we have cinematic mode. This is what it looks like. Welcome to cinematic mode. Does it look like a movie yet? Probably not. This mode is pretty useful if you're not able to put a lot of distance between you and your background. You can control the blur after the fact in the Photos app and overall gives you more freedom to edit the video how you'd like, which I think is pretty cool. But you won't always get the desired effect, so you kind of have to play around with it a little bit. If you like this video so far, make sure to leave a like. And if you're interested in other tech videos, make sure to check out my channel after you're done watching. Moving on to the literal core of the smartphone experience, the battery. With these iPhones, the 13 Pro and the 13 Pro Max, there's supposed to be huge battery improvements. And on the 13 Pro, I feel like this is negated by high energy features like 5G, the 120 hertz screen, and shooting 4K video and stuff like that. The battery kind of is just like, okay, it's about what you would expect. I don't think it's gonna be like pro over some of the other iPhones. It's probably gonna be about the same. In case you're curious, here are my battery statistics. After the amount of time I've had the phone, like here's my battery health, and here's the amount of cycles that I have so far. In case you're curious and how the battery holds up over time. Moving on to the screen. The 120 hertz screen is something that was really new for this phone. In fact, no other iPhone has had 120 hertz before, and it wasn't as cool as it was initially. So initially, I could tell right away 
this is 120 hertz my experience is gonna change forever but that didn't really happen because what happens is unless you're playing games which there are not a lot of 120 hertz games available at this time or you're just kind of like swiping around you're not really going to notice the 120 hertz for example if you're just typing a text message and there's really not a lot of animations going on on the screen you won't really notice. I didn't think that I would get used to it, but I did. Not to say that it's bad, but you won't be able to experience as much high refresh rate content as you think. Another feature of the screen that's not really a feature of the screen is the ceramic shield. I'm just gonna go out and say it's not as protective as you think it would be. I had this phone for a couple of days and I decided to put my phone in my bag. That same day of just walking around at school with my phone in my bag, I got a scratch on my screen. The ceramic shield might be better for like drop protection in terms of like cracking and like shattering you could still get scratches just as easily so I would consider maybe a screen protector if you have to throw your phone in your bag a lot or just keep it in your pocket where it's nice and safe and there won't be any scratches that's been it for this video these are all the features that are most significant to me but if I forgot something make sure to leave me a comment so I can address that and let you know exactly what my experience has been with the phone. Have you ever thought about a secret charger from Apple that's over $80? Well, check out this video because I didn't think it existed until I found this.